there are many uh, for French. Uh, there are many French-speaking communities uh, on Second Life, and uh, Sonia, who's with us, uh, is actually a French uh, citizen, and she uh, you can see on her uh, tag that uh, she has a tag called Arcachon. She belongs to a group called Arcachon, and that's where I uh, right. teach French. So, Miss Pixel Maid, if you yeah. wanted to learn French, uh, this well, is where I could take you. Well, that's one of the things uh, I love doing in Second Life, um, actually learn French and put myself in the shoes of the students. Uh, uh, please go ahead and teleport, and I'll just <laughs> um, try to get my French back. Mm -hmm. Definitely, that's great. Oh, by the way, before we teleport, you were mentioning that conference called Languages uh, before, and this is actually where this conference yes. happened. Um, okay, so let's go uh, to Arcachon. Yes, Arcachon is, is a resort. It's, it's a place in the southwest of France that, uh, that, is, uh, that exists. And uh, the developers of this island have really done a really good job uh, with um, including interesting um, uh, cultural elements. Um, everything is in French, of course, and it's built. Uh, a lot of people are, have contributed uh, for free, have contributed to the building of this island. And it contains a lot of humorous um, um, elements. So here you can see the map uh, of the island and normally I tend to take the students um, for a little drink uh, in the bistro. I take, I take. Uh, so sorry, it's it's still uh, resing a little. The uh, environment is resing. When you see green, uh, uh, grey um, panels, it's because the environment is resing. Um, so I sit here with my students and. Uh, Kiwi Pixel, Pixel Maid, you'd be most welcome to join me and Sonia if she's mm. around. Well, um, <coughs> I have to practice some French. Oui, alors bonjour, uh, Miss Pixel Maid. Je vous... And this bistro is actually a comfortable area. It's always very, very important to uh, make the students feel comfortable. And if you have sitting play, sit, sitting areas, it's, it's much, uh, much better for, uh, for everyone. So, uh, obviously, you haven't chosen no. <laughs> a chair. <laughs> You've chosen to be in, in another, <laughs> in another, oh, sorry, uh, in, on another, at oh. the table. But that's okay. I no, you seem to, to be. Yes, this is one of the awkward moments and the, the, the fun parts of being on Second Life as well. You tend to uh, land on people's head or sit on people's lap uh, without. Um, Without knowing, and, and this relaxes also the students, the anxiety of being in a, in a three, uh, 3D environment. So yes, so here is uh, the bistro, and you can see that it's uh, it's uh, it's fairly typical French. Uh, the name of the of the street or the name of the uh, place is called Place du Pastis, um, and uh, we have some postcard here that you can buy for one linden, and it reproduces the uh, uh, the environment in real life. Um, so after I gauge students uh, on the uh, at the bar at the at the cafe when we've had our little conversation, um, then uh, we are ready to start our first lesson. Um, the idea is really making them feel comfortable for the placement test. So then we move on to the school, and once the class is uh, set up, whether they are beginners or you know more advanced, uh, they get to sit. Um, they get to sit here. The students also are very welcome to teach us, uh, sit at the teacher's desk and then introduce themselves or introduce whatever they want. We also talk, talk about the uh, environment, uh, the classroom environment. As, as you can see here, Miss uh, Pixelmaid has opened um, the, one of the desks. Um, the desks contain little objects that I get the students to name and list. Um, and it's, it's, it's like a little treasure hunt. And one of the beauties of Second Life as well is, is doing treasure hunts where you can put objects um, in different um, areas, hide objects and get the students to play uh, with the environment. Um, okay, so we're going to go out a little and I'll show you a few things as well. Um, what I do with the students, um, I, I, I'm very interested in situated learning. 
And situated learning is, is really um, uh, looking at how students can be in a situation and then learn from, what, from that specific situation. So instead of being in a classroom, the advantage of that 3D environment is that they are evolving in a 3D environment that lends itself to immersion. So with that, um, I use Google Docs and I will show you on the screen, I will show you one of the Google Docs that, I have, um, uh, that I've worked on with uh, the students. So uh, what I do is that we take notes uh, on the local chat and then after the lesson, I, um, um, after the lesson, I um, use uh, th that Google Docs to take the notes um, of what has happened in the lesson. So you can see here, for example, and so I have prepared something, uh, I have an idea of what I want them to do and, and guide them through, but I will definitely leave the lesson to, up to the students to uh, unfold uh, by itself, so it flows naturally. So whatever students come up with, whatever comes up with during the lesson, in the environment, will be useful for the students. And that's what I put then in the Google Doc after the lesson. So you can see here that the contenu de la leçon, I have put uh, a warm up. Uh, there was a little icebreaker um, and we did a revision on lesson, the lesson, uh, the third lesson, the lesson three. And then um, this is what I wanted to, to work with them on the second point. So I introduced that little um, element there. But if um, we start uh, talking about something else, then I will change my plans very, very quickly. So it, re it really demands a, a, a quite a lot of flexibility, but, but um, situated learning is really about being flexible and, and really responding to what the students need. Um, and then um, on the exercise, on the Google Doc as well, I provide some homework and some extra exercise for them to do at home. And they're generally uh, web links of existing exercises that were made by other teachers, teachers and I do check that uh, they are uh, matching what they need. Um, the type of homework I give them too is, um, you know, taking a picture of a um, of, 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 uh, of an area of, of the place that we have done. So, for example, here we were uh, shopping on Arcachon, and uh, we were at the, but the butchery, and uh, both of them were actually chopping some meat um, using an animation on uh, in the shop. And I had asked them to um, write a little story based on the picture that they'd taken. So it is really uh, using um, what um, the students are learning. Wonderful. Um, I must uh, join one of those classes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, there are, um, as I said before, there are uh, French landmarks. Uh, you know, Paris is represented. Uh, let's move on a little bit. I, I will try to okay. show you where the shops are. Um, and we'll, we'll finish there. I, I really hope that uh, we, we can get um, people on board. Um, and if, if uh, people are happy to um, try Second Life, they're most welcome to contact you and, or contact me. So here, is, here are the shops. Um, and I will zoom out and I'll show um, the island a little bit more. So this is the butchery that you saw on the picture. And uh, there, is, there are uh, several souvenir shops in here. There's a beach. And um, in those houses there that I'm showing on the screen, um, we've been working on real estate and uh, role playing, buying a house. There's a lot more to this island that meets the eye. Um, it's really, I think, uh, it demands about two or three hours to actually uh, uh, see everything. Um, but if anyone is interested, uh, please just do feel free to contact me or contact uh, Cyber Pixelmate and uh, Cyber Amber Pixelmate, and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions.